Hello and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with your bite-sized preview for Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. We will be going through some of the key battles, some of the key players, um, looking at the predicted lineups, some head-to-head stats, uh, what to maybe expect from this game, and also some of the key stats and uh, and some players that have played for both clubs. Uh, a little fo- little new focus on on this preview. So, yeah, um, just a little. Uh, we did the match preview yesterday to go through a bit more detail, so do make sure you check that out. But this one's just uh, your 10, 15-minute uh, bite-sized preview to uh, get you your appetites whetted for the game. Um, as always, though, guys, we are on the road um, to 3K, so do please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, help us grow the channel. Um, we are so so close to 2,400. As I said, on the road to 3K, so you will do be doing us a huge huge favour by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't done already. So let's get into Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace. Um, you know, Palace have had a good start to the season. Um, we'll go into this a little bit later on, but they've got some good form away from home. Um, they haven't lost yet away from home. So, and they've got some really key players. And for me, the battle will be as many times in the Premier League will be in the midfield and, um, Jefferson Lerma and, uh, Czech Decore, two very, very strong players. Uh, Lerma, um, you know, did us a lot of damage against us, uh, for Bournemouth last season, obviously scored in the opening game of the season. Um, Decore was one who got sent off, uh, for Palace last season, but is a very, very good player. And obviously in front of them, Eberici Eze is a, a very, very, very good player and one who I would have loved for us to have signed, but Crystal Palace have got him. Um, and, um, and yeah, he's going to be a key, key man for them. Um, they're obviously missing Mark Gahey, who's, uh, got injured a while on international duty. Um, so that's quite a, a good um, one for us. Um, but Anderson is a very good player at, at, um, passing out from the back. Uh, and their forwards are on, are on form. Martin Edwards on form and, and Mateta. I don't know whether he knows exactly what he's going to do when he gets the ball, but he is quite a uh, unpredictable player, shall we say. Um, for Villa, I think, you know, Ollie Watkins is one who is really... Um, again, always divides opinion, but if we can get him back firing and get him celebrating like that tomorrow would be would be fantastic. And I, I'm confident that he can do. But I think Ollie Watkins is a key one for us. Um, as I said, that midfield battle, whether it's Louise, Kamara, or whether Tielemans comes in, I think that what that one is is where we're going to um going to really um, decide the game. And at the back, obviously Pau Torres has come under a little bit of criticism, but I do think at home, you know, his passing quality will come through and whether Consa is partnering him or whether Consa's out on the right-hand side, I do think it will be Consa and Torres at the back. But yeah, he's uh, he's one who um, who could do with a, a really good game. So yeah, some real good key battles uh, out there uh, for Saturday and, uh, and one to watch out for. But you guys let me know in the comments who you think, you know, where is the game going to be won or lost? Um, who are you expecting to really perform for Villa? Uh, and who are you worrying about for Crystal Palace? Um, in terms of uh, predicted lineups, I'll, we'll have a look at uh, um, FOTMOB for this. Um, so um, just bear with me two seconds. So we've got here, so we're looking like uh, Martinez in goal, um, Dina, Torres, Conza and Cash across the back. McGinn, Luis, Kamara and Zaniolo is predicted to get a start with Watkins and DRB. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were talking last night about Zaniolo. I think um, Bailey's had two international games, quite a long flight. Bites. So whether it's due to that or whether it's due to just Daniolo doing well in his cameo appearances and, and Emery wanting to reward him with a start, maybe a bit more physicality in there as well, a bit more um, kind of uh, arrogance, shall we say. Um, I think Villa fans will be really excited to see him. Um, for uh, Crystal Palace, we've got Sam Johnston in goal, uh, obviously ex-Villa, clue for, for past Villa players there. Um, Ward, Anderson, Tompkins in there with Mitchell and then Decore and Lerma, as I said. AU, uh, another ex-Villa. Eze and Jeffrey Schluck with Eduard up front. So, you know, a very solid side um, with sprinklings of quality. I think I think if we can shut Eze out of the game, I think we can, um, which is very difficult, I hasten to add, we can really, um, you know, do some real damage in this game. But that's looking like the uh, the lineups um, that we can expect for tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can we can turn them over, which would be excellent to see. Now, in terms of head to head and the stats on on both sides, um, 
we'll have a quick look in terms of that. We've played each other 24 times in the Premier League. Villa have won a total of nine. Palace have won eight. Um, obviously, looking at that, very, very strong uh, both sides at home. So Villa have won seven out of those nine wins at home. Palace have won seven out of their eight at home. Um, and then two away wins for Villa, one away win for Palace, and then seven draws. Um, so always quite tight in terms of um, the games. Um, recent meetings, Villa won last season uh, 1-0 at Villa Park, own goal from Anderson. Palace um, beat us 3-1 early season uh, under Gerrard, where we did, really didn't turn up. Previous season was 1-1 draw towards the end of that season, and then a 2-1 victory. I think it might have been Stephen Gerrard's first away win. Um, and uh, and then before, prior to that, we lost 3-2, I believe, in, in lockdown. So, yeah, um, always always tight games. Um, tends to be goals. Uh, I do remember as well another great performance from Villa against Palace in, in lockdown season when I think Al Ghazi scored an absolute screamer. So um, there tends to be goals in the game and, and, and a key win where I think it was Trezeguet um, got a couple of really key goals for us when we were in the in the season where we stayed up. So, yeah, some real positive results, but also obviously positive results in Palace can uh, can talk about. In terms of form, um, you know, we're off the back of a def- uh, chasing defeat against Liverpool, won the previous two, Burnley and Everton, and then, you know, a heavy defeat to, to Newcastle. Um, and then obviously the preseason draw against Brentford. Palace um, had a, a game in the Carabao Cup where they beat Plymouth, um, a, a 3 2 victory against Wolves, 1 1 draw against Brentford, lost narrowly to Arsenal and beat Sheffield United 1 0. So not a bad not a bad start for them. Um, they've won two games so far this season and drawn one and lost one. So they're uh, currently in seventh position. And um, they're in 10th with one, two and lost two. Obviously, very early season. We're averaging two goals a game. Palace are averaging 1.25, but we're also averaging over two goals conceded per game, whereas Palace are averaging one. Um, so, yeah, uh, as I say, both teams fairly evenly matched on the start of the season basis and both teams creating chances. So, I expect it to be um, expect it to be a good a good game. So, yeah, um, both teams I'm sure will go into it with quite a lot of confidence. In terms of kind of some some statistics to go through uh, and team news, obviously Alex Moreno is back in contention. Um, I'm not sure he will start, but um, but it's great to have him uh, back in, in, in full training. I know Jacob Ramsey is um, is back in training as well. Probably won't be ready for tomorrow uh, to be in the squad. And Bertrand Traore is also training well. Possibly could be in the squad. Who knows? Uh, and then one or two others are, are out. Diego Carlos is out, and uh, as is Tim Irug Bonham. So. Um, yeah, looking looking like it, it'll be Paolo Torres and Conte at centre back. Longley obviously came in. I don't think he'll be quite ready. And uh, comments on Tielemans, obviously Emery saying that he's happy that he had really happy with him. We're happy that he wants to improve, and he's he's kind of learning how to work with the team. Um, so you know, has he has he put himself in the mind of the manager to get a start? You guys let me know in in the comments. But yeah, Moreno's looking at potentially in contention. Uh, as I said before, Palace without Mark Gahey. Um, and Jefferson Lerma saying that he does have a slight hamstring problem, which would be amazing for us if he if he doesn't play, because I think he's a really dangerous player. Um, we've only lost one of our last 11 Premier League home games against Palace. So as I say, we've got a really good record. We're also... Uh, uh, um, Into win number six Premier League games. Uh, we've won our consecutive home games in all competitions. First time since um, from the 11th of October 1989 to January 1990. So that's a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal uh, record to have broken there. But if we can make it nine Premier League wins, that would be fantastic. Um, and Douglas Louise, interestingly, can become the first Villa player to score in four consecutive. Premier League home matches since Gareth Barry in 2016, uh, 2006. Um, However, Unai Emery was winless in all three Premier League matches as Arsenal manager versus Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace. And that's draw, drew two and lost one. Um, obviously, last season, um, Patrick Vieira was the manager when Unai won. So, you know, he's got to put one over. We know what Unai Emery is like with, um, with, uh, with breaking records. So hopefully he can do that. As I said before, Palace are undefeated away from home um, this season. Um, they could go unbeaten in their opening three away league games for the first time since the 03-04 season. Uh, Eberichi Eze, who I said, is a key player. 
completed 13 dribbles and created seven chances from set plays in the, in the Premier League so far, um, more than any other player. And Edouard, Arten Edouard, has scored three of Palace's five Premier League goals. So he's on, he seems to be on form. He seems to have had a good pre-season. So we need to keep our eyes on him. Um, and finally, um, just looking um, at some players who previously played for both clubs. Uh, um, and I already mentioned one or two uh, who are currently playing in the Palace team, Sam Johnston, uh, who played for Villa from 2015 uh, to 2017 uh, on loan and has been at Palace since 2019. He made 70 appearances uh, for us over two loan spells. Jordan Ayew obviously was part of the famous team that got relegated uh, 2015 to 2017. Um, but has, has been at Palace since 2019 and by all accounts has done well. Uh, Christian Benteke um, was obviously one of the most famous ones, was fantastic for Villa, um, nominated for PFA Young Player of the Year, scored 49 times in 101 games um, and, uh, and played for Villa from 2012 to 2015 and then was at Palace from 2016 to 2022. Um, but, you know, Always had, you know, niggly injuries for Palace, never quite got going. Um, I think Villa definitely got the best years out of him. Um, Mili Yedinak, uh, another player who played for both clubs, 2011 to 2016 at Palace, 2016 to 2019 at Villa, and obviously, you know, helped us get promoted to the Premier League. So, and he's, he's still with the club as the own manager. Yannick Balassi, um, obviously a, a, a quite a, a, an eventful loan spell with Villa. Um, you know, flashes of brilliance, but never quite, never quite got there with us. Um, but was obviously a, a favourite at Palace from 2012 to 2016. Gary Cahill, um, you know, a player who probably left Villa a little bit too early from our point of view, 2004 to 2008, and was at Palace kind of towards the back end of his career. Um, and Gareth Southgate, one, one and only Gareth Southgate, was at Palace from 98 to 95, and then from Villa from 95 to 2001 and lifted the League Cup with us. So, yeah, um, some key, some really key players and other other notable mentions, Barry Bannon, Stan Collymore, John Fashionu, Leon, Lewis Graben, Andy Gray, Ray Houghton is another one I, I really remember, Kevin Phillips, Steve Staunton, Scott Sinclair, and, and various others who've represented both clubs. So, yeah, um, quite a few connections with... Um, we're with Crystal Palace and Villa. Um, you guys, again, let me know in the comments who was your favourite? Who who do you think did best for both clubs? Um, and, and which one do you remember the most fondly? Um, finally, my prediction um, is going to be the same as last night's show. 3-1 um, to Villa. Um, I believe uh, Zaniolo is going to score. I think uh, Bailey will score. And I think Ollie Watkins will score. I went for Bailey to start. I know the predicted lineup says Zaniolo to start, but I think either either way they'll swap swap over positions and, and they'll both grab a goal. So that's my position, prediction. You guys let me know your predictions in the comments. Um, that's it for the Bite Size Preview. Thank you so much for watching. As I say, do please support the channel. Help us on the road to, to 3K. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and thank you all for your support we are very much looking forward to saturday and as always do remember we all follow the villa thanks everyone